and in the Middle East, Israel continues with airstrikes in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. Israeli troops now completely control Gaza's Rafah border crossing with Egypt. Fighting between the Israeli army and Hamas has forced the evacuation of the city's main hospital. Many nations, including the United States, have repeatedly warned Israel against the ongoing military offensive. This appears to be a limited operation, but of course it uh, much of that depends on what comes next. They have said, I think quite clearly, it's no secret that they want to conduct a major military operation there. We have made, clearly, made clear that we oppose such an operation. And separately, but of course it's related, we are trying to uh, achieve an agreement that would bring an immediate ceasefire and the release of hostages. Now, Washington has taken the unprecedented step of withholding a shipment of bombs and ammunition designated for Israel. This comes as the United States accuses Israel of not fully addressing President Biden's concerns of the humanitarian needs of Palestinians in the Gaza City. The stalled shipment for Israel includes Boeing-made Joint Direct Attack Munitions, or JDAMs, which convert dumb bombs into guided missiles. The cargo also includes 1,800 bombs that weigh 2,000 pounds and another 1,700 bombs that weigh 500 pounds. Now, this is, in fact, the first time that the United States has withheld a weapons delivery from Israel since the war first began in October of last year. Meanwhile, Israel has said weapons or no weapons, the invasion of Rafah will move forward. Yesterday, I directed the IDF to enter the Rafah area take the crossing and carry out its missions. This operation will continue until we eliminate Hamas in the Rafah area and the entire Gaza Strip, or until the first hostage returns. We are willing to make compromises in order to bring back hostages. But if that option is removed, we will go on and deepen the operation. This will happen all over the Strip, in the south, in the center, and in the north. We know that Hamas only responds to force. Now, Washington continues to oppose the operation, convinced that Israel will not ensure the safety of over a million Palestinians that are in the city. And the United States has dispatched a delegation to Israel, including CIA Director William Burns. Burns will hold talks with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as a last-minute effort to secure a ceasefire deal. Now, Hamas has already accepted a three-stage ceasefire proposed by Qatar in Egypt late Monday. And the first stage includes the exchange of Israeli hostages for Palestinian prisoners. Details of the ceasefire accepted by Hamas have emerged and highlight that the Palestinian group agreed to release 33 Israeli hostages, including those that are dead. Israel says the proposal fails to meet even the basic demands put forward by Israel, which includes the release of all hostages. As the war cabinet unanimously determined, the Hamas proposal is very far from Israel's necessary requirements. Israel will not allow Hamas to restore its evil rule in the Gaza Strip. Israel will not allow it to restore its military capabilities to continue striving for our destruction. Israel cannot accept a proposal that endangers the security of our citizens and the future of our country. Now for months, Israel had been postponing its offensive by pinning its hope on this ceasefire. But since no agreement has been reached, it appears Netanyahu is upping the ante with an all-out invasion in Rafah. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections to climate change to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.